Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through Chapter 4.2, Alkanes, the simplest organic compounds. Now, alkanes are a family or a class of organic compounds, and they contain carbon and hydrogen only. They're known as hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons contain carbon and hydrogen only. One more time. Hydrocarbons contain carbon and hydrogen only, and they are referred to as saturated hydrocarbons. Now, what do they mean by that? Saturated hydrocarbons have carbon-carbon single bonds only, and they're known as alkanes. So let's just draw a simple alkane. You should recognize this is a, this is a Lewis structure, right? Or an expanded structural formula. So that's an example of an alkane. This is actually propane. It's propane. It's a saturated hydrocarbon. Saturated hydrocarbons contain carbon and carbon single bonds only, and they only contain carbon and hydrogen. So there's no sulfur or oxygen or anything like that in this molecule. They're called alkanes. They're the simplest ones. So here's another example. There's an alkane. Notice it's just carbon and hydrogen. Carbon, carbon, single bonds, alkane. All right, so let's take a look at uh, two different kinds of alkanes. We have uh, straight chained and branched alkanes. Straight chained are kind of what we've been drawing, you know, so far, with just you know carbons and hydrogens. These are known as straight chain. They're not literally straight. They do go through a zigzag pattern, like the uh, skeletal formulas are, but they're commonly known as straight chained alkanes. There we go. There's one example, and then. Even though it goes through a zigzag pattern, it's still a, a, considered a straight-chained alkane. And is what they know, is known as unbranched. Unbranched means that there's nothing. For example, let me draw you a branched alkane just so you can have a comparison. There we go. So now you have, this is a what they call a branching point right here, where more carbons are dangling off of your, uh, your parent molecule. So these are known as branched. And you can draw another branch here if you want it to. And another one here if you wanted to. They're much more complicated. They're called branched alkanes. Um, and that's just what they're known as. And then there's, of course, your cycloalkanes, which is, uh, for example, there we go. That's cyclopropane, which you just draw a triangle. cyclopropane, where you put the prefix cyclo in front of it, indicating that the carbon's going in like a round pattern, or they go into a ring, a ring formation. And, you know, this just draw the skeletal formula of a couple more, cyclopentane. So, oops, let me get myself out of the way here. And then there's a cyclohexane, which is just a hexagon. Remember, these are skeletal formulas now, right? And that's just how it works. Nothing uh, too crazy there. But uh, just so you know, cyclo, uh, pentane and cyclohexane are quite common in nature, so we are going to see them again. So just keep that in mind. Now, here we have ourselves the table of the alkanes. And you're going to want to commit this table to memory. Now, the hardest, hardest four are the first four to remember because they don't actually follow any kind of um, geometry or any kind of, that I can find, logical rules. So the first four are hard to memorize, methane being one carbon. Ethane has two carbons. Propane has three carbons. And butane has four carbons. Now, once they get to five carbons, then they start using geometry. So if I were to ask you what a five-sided geometric shape was, you would say a pentagon. Well, five-carbon chain is a pentane. Pent meaning five. The next one, a hexagon has six sides, so hexane has six carbons. Heptane, seven 
An octagon has eight. Octane has eight carbons. Nonane, a nonagon. Decane, decane has ten carbons. Decagon, ten. Decade, ten. You get the idea. So the first four are the hard ones. After that, they follow geometric rules or they use geometric prefixes that you're already familiar with. Now, it is important that we understand that alkanes are nonpolar. The electronegativities between carbon and hydrogen are very similar. So there is no delta negative, there is no delta positive on that. Let me put my face down here. Okay? Now, hydrocarbons, alkanes, are nonpolar, which means there's no delta negative, no delta positive. So um, that's an important thing to remember. Now, alkanes are, regardless of their shape, are nonpolar. Alkanes are nonpolar. Now, the fact that they're nonpolar will affect how they behave in aqueous environments, like your body, for example, like in your washing machine, like when you're washing your hands. Because water is not nonpolar. Water is extremely polar. Water is polar. Therefore, it will not dissolve alkanes. Because there's this thing in chemistry called like dissolves like. Polar dissolves polar, nonpolar dissolves nonpolar, but they don't mix. You've probably heard the saying before that oil and water don't mix. Why? Water's polar, oil is nonpolar. That's why oil and water don't mix. Okay? All right, that's 4.2. Pretty short little uh, part of the chapter. So we'll stop it here and we'll pick it up on chapter 4.3. So for now, I wish you good luck and good chemistry.